what I'm talking about. Wait! Okay now, from the beginning. Hit it, boy. Looking for a Z-Wave Smart dimmer switch that supports non-neutral installations? Today we're going to review the Innovelli Z-Wave Plus Smart Dimmer Switch. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. Stay tuned. Hey, Smart Homers, John Stone, the DIY Smart Home Guy. Innovelli has done it again, and by that I mean they have knocked it out of the park with their new Red Series Smart Dimmer. I mean, holy crap a moly, I was blown away by their Red Series on-off switch, and this dimmer is even more impressive. It's like they took every smart switch on the market, dropped them into a blender, and then baked this brand new Innovelli cookie. There's so much in this thing, I'm not sure your smart home automation can live without it. In summary, the Innovelli Red Series dimmer supports neutral and non-neutral wiring application. That's right, you now have an alternative to the Lutron Caseta no neutral dimmers. And with the optional Innovelli device handlers, you can achieve up to 11 different seed controls through either multi-taps on the main switch or a single tap on the configuration button. The three-way switch options are simply mind-blowing, providing you with the ability to use a smart add-on switch, a dumb three-way switch, or another Innovelli dimmer. Like, I don't even know what to say. Oh, and the three-way dumb switch allows you to leave your existing wiring intact, just like you can do with the Zoo Zen 26, Zen 27, and Innovelli red and black on-off switches. The switch also has this gigantic LED strip that is packed full of capabilities. During the pairing process, it can be used as a signal strength meter. Red means no signal in range, and green means you're good to go. And no, nobody paid me to do this, but some of those links below are affiliate links, so go ahead and click those. Hey, click that like button and the subscribe button, and click that bell icon to be notified for future live broadcasts. Do it. Once the switch is in place, the LED meter will show you the dimmer level as you ramp up and down, and it can also be used for notifications. We'll talk more about notifications in a little bit, but they're freaking awesome. As I said before, notifications and scenes require a custom device handler, and these are available for both SmartThings and Hubitat Elevation. And don't forget, you'll need the child device handlers as well. The switch is also highly configurable with 51 parameters under your complete control. You heard me right, 51, that's 5-1. Now to be fair, 20 of these parameters are dedicated to the notification features, but that's still a lot of parameters under your control. So what do you do if your hub doesn't support custom Innovelli device handlers? Well, in true Innovelli form, they have a way for you to configure the dimmer from the switch itself. Manual configurations from the switch include dimming speed, ramp rate, min and max dimming level, default LED display colors, and the switch installation type, meaning neutral or non-neutral, three-way, etc. <laughs> this is crazy, my brain's about to explode. To set the manual configurations, hold down on the configure button for 10 to 15 seconds. You'll be in configuration mode when the LED turns yellow. There's links to the Innovelli configuration videos below and keep an eye out for more videos from Innovelli on these topics. Let's dig deeper into this little hunk of rockin' awesome. Once the handlers are installed, you should see the capabilities in your hub. Also remember that after inclusion in Hubitat, this will probably show up as a generic device. You'll need to change the handler to the Innovelli driver located at the bottom of the type list in the device settings page. In SmartThings, it shows up as a Z-Wave metering dimmer. In either case, you'll need to change the device type to the Innovelli Dimmer Red Series LZW31-SN or LZW31 for the Black Series. And there's good news. I checked this out in the new SmartThings app, and it looks like you can perform the advanced setup here as well as in the Classic app. We'll look at these in both smart things and the Hubitat Elevation together. The thing you'll notice in the app is the crazy number of commands that are available on this switch. I mean, it's freakish. You'll see the ability to tap up five times, tap down five times, which gives you up to 10 scene controls. Pushing the configuration slash favorites button gives you an 11th scene. In Hubitat, this is programmed using button seven pushed event. In smart things, you'll use something like the smart lighting app where you'll use the button pressed slash hold trigger and then select button number seven with an action of pushed. Now let's take a deeper look into some of these switch parameters. 
The first preference is one I really like. This controls the dimming speed when controlled from the hub. That's right, dimming speed from the hub. This implies that you can set a different dimming speed from the switch itself. Setting either one of these values to zero will have the effect of this dimmer acting like an on-off switch. This is important because you may notice a lag when you're controlling the light from the switch. At least I did. At first I thought I'd found a flaw in the switch. Then I changed this parameter and <laughs> viola. It was as fast as you'd normally expect. Check this out. This is the response time with the dimming speed set to zero. It's lightning fast. And the response time with the dimming speed set to five. And I think you can see the delay. But if you want it to be unbearably slow, you can set that value to 99. <laughs> no, no, do not do that. The moral of this little story is set the value to one that you're comfortable with and make sure you account for the hub control and the switch control. Next on our list is the ramp rate. This controls how fast the switch moves between dim positions. And again, you can set this for the hub and the switch separately. Pay attention to the notes since there's a setting that will allow you to keep them both in sync which is pretty cool. Now on to the minimum and maximum levels. This particular LED light bulb doesn't perform well with a dim level below 22%. So I can set the minimum to 25 to make sure that I don't drive the switch output power so low that it won't light the light. You can also set the maximum brightness. You want to play around with this setting to see where the sweet spot is for the light and switch combination. And here you have the standard invert switch and auto off timer cool functions that are self-explanatory. And of course, our favorite state after power restored. My personal preference is to set this to off so that I'm not woken up in the middle of the night with interrogation level lighting if there was a momentary power outage while I was asleep. Let's look at the neutral and non-neutral capabilities of the Innovelli Red Series LZW31-SN. Yeah, I said Zed, what about it? Once the switch is installed, you will want to make sure that you set the configuration option for AC power type. Your choices will be non-neutral and neutral. You'll want to make sure that you set this parameter as soon as you get the switch paired with the hub. If you don't have a white neutral wire, you'll want to select the non-neutral setting. Pay attention to this fun fact. If you are using this switch for loads under 25 watts, you'll need a bypass or a load resistor. Since most newer LED bulbs come in at around 8 to 11 watts, this will be important. Geek alert. Geek alert. Remember that there is a computer inside this switch and it needs to stay powered. In the non-neutral setup, non-neutral switches rely on current flow through the light or the load to keep the Z-Wave chip powered. This particular Z-Wave chip requires a minimum of a 25 watt load to ensure that there's enough current flowing to power the chip. What do you do if you don't have a circuit that adds up to 25 watts? You put in a load resistor. This can be placed in the light housing like so. Me, I'm using this AOTech bypass, link below. I like this particular bypass since it has flexible wires with soldered ends and the conductors are insulated. This reduces the chances of arcing and sparking in the box. Some of the other load resistors that I've seen have bare wires, which is fine as long as you wrap the wires with heat shrink or electrical tape. For me, this leaves too much to chance, so I pick the AOTech. If you're using a regular neutral setup, you don't need to worry about the load resistor. Here's a quick chart that explains each of the wiring configurations. It'll help you figure out what to do in both single switch and three-way switch installations with or without a neutral wire. When it comes to three-way switch installations, you have three options. Option one is to use a regular or dumb three-way switch as your add-on switch. This is a mechanical toggle switch that usually has one black terminal and two brass colored terminals. This installation, in many cases, requires no rewiring of the add-on switch if you're using this Innovelli. You'll want to pay attention to the Innovelli provided wiring diagrams. There's a link to the Innovelli dimmer wiring guide in the description below. If you plan to use the dumb add-on switch, this can only be accomplished with a standard neutral wire installation. And in the app, both SmartThings and Hubitat, make sure that you set the switch type setting to three-way toggle. Option number two is to use a smart add-on switch or the aux switch. These look more like normal smart switches. However, they only have two wiring lugs. 
There are links to three different brands below. Option two requires some rewiring of the second box. Take a look at the Innovelli wiring page to understand how that works. The nice thing about option two is that it provides a consistent up is on, down is off experience. Take note that the add-on switches do not support multi-tap for scenes, but it does allow dimming from the aux switch, which the dumb add-on switch won't support. And option two is compatible for both neutral and non-neutral installation. This requires that you set the switch type parameter to three-way momentary. Option three, this allows you to use two identical Innovelli dimmers for three-way switches. Again, check out the Innovelli wiring diagrams. This option can only be used if you have a neutral wire, and there are some special handling considerations for this configuration. In this setup, the main switch is configured as a load-only switch in the switch type setup. The internal relay gets disabled on switch number two, then you need to associate switch one with switch two using your hub's association features. I confess I haven't really experimented with the association group's features of the hubs yet, so I'm afraid I really can't help you out in this video. But according to Innovelli, this is possible on both Hubitat and SmartThings. Once you set up the option three configuration, you'll have access to normal dimming from both switches and up is on, down is off, and multi-tap scene control is available, again, from both switches. Now, off of three-way switches and onto notifications, this switch allows for up to five notifications. What is a notification, you ask? Well, these can be used as indications on the switch when other smart things in the house take place. Like, if your doors are unlocked or your garage doors open, you can have the switch blink like red or something. For each notification, you can set the LED color, the level of brightness of the LED, the LED effect duration, which can range from one second to five minutes, and there is an indefinite setting, which means that the notification will stay on until you have another command that shuts it off. And lastly, you can set the LED effect type, which includes a solid light, fast or slow blink, or a pulse. Oh, and notifications don't yet appear in the new SmartThings app, but they are still available in the classic app. You'll see the notification on the main device page. You can turn the notification on and off manually from here. In Hubitat, after you save the settings, you'll see the notification appear at the bottom of the device page under Component Devices. At this point, the notifications act like any other device in both SmartThings and Hubitat. You can integrate them into smart lighting apps, rule machine, and web core. Now, I'm pretty sure that I missed lots of coolness about this switch in this video. You should be sure to let me know your favorite Innovelli dimmer feature in the comments below. Well, thanks for hanging out with me today. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to click like. Over here are a couple of videos that I found on my mailbox this morning. Until next time, cheers.